a bit though. <clears throat> okay, I can explain this. This is about the reason why uh, we have always seen throughout human history, I'm sure, people that come back from war, veterans, are neglected, shunned by family, friends, commit suicide. It's a problem. It's a problem today in every country. What I'm going to explain, once you understand it, explains a lot of the predicament human civilization mankind is in, I mean, the predicament humankind is in the predicament of the civilization he has designed for himself, which creates so many of the problems that we have. Um, okay. The human form, the human collective, the human form of the species is given to us by evolution, most of which occurred, let's say, 95% or 99% of our evolutionary DNA, our, the form of this creature that we are, was given to us during a time where our mind and our intelligence did not create complex systems. We lived like animals uh, do, like we see animals live today. We foraged, we hunted with our bare hands, you know, um, and we lived collectively. We also had social dynamics, like like collective, uh, like animals do today too. This gave us our mind predispositions, our setups, what uh, our limitations, where we lose patience, or where we lose concentration where we become tempted, where we want to stop doing what we're doing and do something else, where we get distracted. Our limitations are given to us by the form of this 99% that was formed, was shaped by evolution. Excuse me, I just finished having dinner um, by evolution. Suddenly, during the, the last hour of our 100 year long evolution, let's say, uh, somehow, and this is, I'm going to leave this to your own speculation, your own theological uh, speculation, perhaps. Um, we have an intelligence that suddenly understands a vast leap beyond what any animal can in the, on the planet. We can all of a sudden understand sciences. We understand ourselves. We understand our sciences, our biology. Um, uh, in a way that animals could never understand their own existence. And we have uh, been able to create uh, complex systems of administration, of distribution, um, of, um, of governance, which has created institutions, which has created philosophical um, sciences, sciences of of, uh, of all sorts of um, values and morale that we later apply to our institutions and our inventions of, uh, an, of administered, administered society. But the base animal creature that we are hasn't gone anywhere. We're still here, um, except that we have this capacity um, it's like sun. It's like God came from the heavens and, and put a, you know, an incredible brain in, in this creature, and now we are this creature with this incredible brain, and that is the human being. To give you sort of a, a quick uh, rendition of an idea, so you can imagine what I'm trying to explain. Um, and so, what happens? Mankind, the species, our collective people, you and me, we really don't want war, all-out war, like we know it, where armies go and destroy countries and, and kill hundreds of babies. And, you know, uh, we naturally refrain upon seeing this capacity. Our natural impulse is to not have this. If we did not have governments that organized uh, armies, if we did not have the weapons, obviously, yes, this creature that we are, we would probably fight, have arguments, 
And we might look for allegiance. We might look around and see who wants to join us in my argument. The base is, uh, root tendencies are in the species. We will look for a group to feel stronger in our fight, in our argument. But where we become shy and step back and refrain is upon seeing a destruction that is the result of a capacity that is not ours. It is the result of this intelligence that we have that administrates very complex systems. And so what happens is that when soldiers come back from war, we are thinking what they've done. We know what war is. This modern human knows what he's capable of doing. Now, to give you, to come from another angle at this, why do countries um, put so much um, honing and and um, and pushing their, their 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 soldiers forward to want to uh, join the army and fight? There's all sorts of conditioning, training, and then of course there is the 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 government explanation for why we're warring we have to fool our people we have to fool the population as we all know <laughs> now that the uh, internet has made communications uh, universal and in, in, in at the level of education of world history and so many of us already know that um, governments lie to their people but it's not so simple as planning to lie they want to achieve things and they run into the same humanity that I'm trying to explain. So they know that if they say things a certain way, the natural uh, mind of, of, the, of the society, of the social creature that we are, will be reluctant, will not accept. So they have to package things, they have to present them, they have to explain them a certain way. And so we commonly say government lies to the people about the, its reasons to war. Um, and the reason that this happens, the reason that we reject our soldiers when they come back um, is because really we don't want war and we're not proud of our soldiers when they come back. Not because we're terrible, ungrateful beings, but because that is not what the species actually wants. If you look at countries like Britain, for example, or um, France, these, are, these were empires, warring empires, and they have... Uh, really honed a culture much more than the United States, uh, ingrained it to its society of um, refined, um, how do you, you know, social elements and elements of their patriotism and the way they understand countryhood and the way they um, they look at the world they are much more respectful towards their veterans. I'm not sure about France. I'm pretty sure that both Britain and France are uh, fairer to their um, um, veterans because they, they, these are empires that grew up in, in, in dozens of generations after generations of fighting wars, and so they had to uh, develop a ritual. They had to develop social... Um, uh, ele uh, ways of uh, cultural ritual that ingrains in the way that the people think automatically uh, respects uh, and gives honor to these people that come back from war. But you see, they had to develop that to to counteract what the species naturally doesn't want. It doesn't. We naturally don't want to kill. I mean, this, there, there are a lot of common disbeliefs, misbeliefs in science today. Because we think everything originates in the human mind and everything that we see the world is, is a result of what we would want. This is not true. Our, uh, and it makes no scientific sense also if you think about it. The species is a life form that wants to proliferate, expand in the universe multiply we are a collective before we are an individual it means that the nature and evolution designed a collective it didn't design the human being the man and then the woman or anything like that we are meant to be a collective and function healthy as a collective for individuals to exist healthy um, in this in, in this in the collective species and so it really stands to reason that if the 
collective is to survive, it doesn't destroy itself. It doesn't just destroy its own kind. A lot of our tragedies, a lot of our problems and um, um, sufferings are caused by our unusually intelligent capacity to design, to invent, to create complex structures, being uh, be them uh, theoretical, meaning not physical, systems of administration or, or complex uh, systems of thought, philosophy, and so forth, um, or ethics, or uh, complex structures of spiritual, moral uh, beliefs uh, based on values and principles, or uh, actual physical and constructs like armies and weapons, sophisticated engineering, and so forth. These are things that are like our productions, but they're not, they're sort of a production that we are capable of making because of this uh, in, uh, unusual and interesting intelligence that we find ourselves wielding. And when you compare us to the animal species, you see that it really does look like somebody did something with us, you know, and uh, there may be a place for us to find how our creators, our God, um, gave us some some leads for us to to get to a different way of understanding our creation, though making themselves present and early on in, in literature and maybe a propensity to want to find something or them already in us that comes with us the where we which may be part of this uh difference this intelligence uh that we even eventually will discover that we are intentionally made this way to find ourselves again to find ourselves with our creators or or something that will you know um uh, be better understood as we continue developing our self-awareness as a species on this planet um, but just to not get too crazy out there because I wasn't prepared to talk about that um, it's important that we understand that the veterans are um, you know neglected and, and they have psychological problems uh, many of them, depending on the character that you grew up, you know, uh, in, as, I mean, in, that, that you were raised in, uh, you know, not everybody will be traumatized or abandoned, by, but the, there is a, an average, there is an average, we can't, uh, we can deduce things that have to do with our design, the form of our species, by average numbers, and if we see for example, that uh, people that stop practicing a profession like law, architecture, medicine, or what have you, they don't have a problem. They know what they have lots of things they can do with their lives. But when soldiers come back from war, on average, they're plagued with things like suicide, abandonment, neglect. Uh, government, the people in government don't make them a priority mainly in countries in the Americas. So it stands to reason that uh, countries in America suffer this more because they are quickly grown nations that are more, uh, uh, how do you say, s s s sort of slapped together through time. I don't know how to say this in English. Um, um, raw, too quickly developed, grown too fast with too much power and too much capacity in too little time. They didn't get a chance to refine things to counteract the natural tendency of our refu rejection or re uh, refusal to honor and believe in war. Now, if you understand this, like, like countries like Russia, or I don't know, I think Russia may have problems too with uh, their veterans. I'm, I'm not very versed in this, but there, there would be reasons. And more classical, very institutionalized, very government uh, instru uh, instrumentalized by government countries like England and France and Spain, perhaps. They were empires that fought, and they have a, a strict relationship between their people and, and their uh, 
and their warring uh, em empires, governments, and so they, they, I think they don't have this problem. But what is important to understand, if you get this, is not that, oh, then we have to become better at it. No, it's the other way around. We should be thinking more about what satisfy, what fulfills, what fits better, what the natural species is asking for. That is what is most comfortable and, and truest and healthiest, healthiest to us. Um, it's healthier for us to walk to places <laughs> than to spend our lives in a car. To give you an example, our capacity is not our best friend. Our capacity is something that we need to understand how to handle it so that it doesn't harm us. War and um, war is, is, is not only the invention of governments and military organization, but also of the weapon. The, the, compa the, the fact that we can pick something up and quickly kill a whole bunch of people is like putting razor blades in the hand of a baby. We, can, we end up having wars because we have the capacity. Um, and, and, and science really hasn't grasped this yet. It hasn't connected uh, a lot of things that we understand in human sciences with uh, evolutionary science and realize that we are not to blame we are not the enemy we're not the one that is messed up we don't we're not the one that needs that it was created to be challenged by its self well we weren't created for that reason we are challenged by ourselves because we're not self-aware enough to understand that we have been given a gift by creators maybe by natural cosmic evolution perhaps one species also makes a uh, grows an intelligence very quickly and finds itself challenged to uh, not harm itself. So I'm not saying that I'm not being sci-fi weird and saying that aliens or, or God is actually an alien that gave us a capacity. Uh, you know, you could you could have some theories, but you could also that's irrelevant. You could also say. You know, it could have been natural cosmic evolution, and in each planet, one of the species, for whatever reason, we don't understand, becomes very intelligent, and suddenly it is very capable of all these lesser parts of its nature, which wouldn't harm all that much other ones of their being. You know, all of a sudden get immensely expanded, and uh, we become unable to wield the and control and, and hone and contain this because this harm capacity because we didn't grow it we didn't evolve with that so uh we evolved sharing and building and doing things uh nurturing ourselves and nurturing our family and our offspring and uh learning you know as we uh displaced ourselves through the planet and so good is only um, good has the limitations of fulfilling our the the normalcy the normal extent of our well-being. Uh, another of the philosophical problems that we have is that we have created an understanding of of uh, the nature of human mind that is. Uh, of, of good and evil having a symmetrical opposition in our, in our heads. And that has created um, a situation that is really nothing to do with what is really happening. Uh, there is no need for us to uh, uh, do more good. We can logically, and we should logically, do more good than we feel inclined to do. But we feel more tempted to do destruction and harm because it is about winning. It is about furthering ourselves, conquering existence, not dying, having more to eat more, nurture and, and grow more. You know, we want life and evolution wants to push forward as strong as it can. So this is the force that ironically takes its capacity to harm and hurts all around it to make more room for itself but not because it is evil and not because um, we don't know what we're doing it's the result of 
a, a being, this being, this collective being that we are, being finding itself with this prowess of intelligent logic uh, and engineering capacity. So to live and to exist is normal. We find ourselves with uh, very intelligent capacity. And so, yes, we do good extra more. We build houses that can be very strong against the elements. Um, uh, but we don't think of necessarily uh, the first thing that we think is sharing them with everybody around us and building homes for other people. Uh, or even though we're a collective before we're individuals. However, the harm that we cause more excessively than good has to do with our natural inbred insecurity and fearfulness of the elements against gravity, against harm, against the destruction of the elements, the planetary elements, the biology, the illnesses, the end of life, the beasts and animals that used to chase us and kill us during most of our evolutionary time. We have a natural uh, evolved aspect of uncertainty and security and fear that um, asks our capacity to our, our prime primary desire to survive and evolve and thrive to do something about it to not let it itself get killed because there's all this all this uh, threat in the in the condition of existence in the predicament of existence and so because we want to survive this intelligence gets put to the use of um, defending ourselves. Defending ourselves is being aggressive sometimes uh, because we are based on not uh, peace and uh, lack of fear, but we're, we try to achieve peace, but that is not our, our, our natural, neutral base. We are in a state of always having to survive the threat of existence and so um, we need to sort of rethink our condition in the world as a collective see that there are no threats <laughs> to the species that we are being stupid and making ourselves the enemy and look at the existence of humanity in a whole, in a, humanity in a whole different way a way that we've never known before uh, and that would change everything. That would change all our principles and moral values and things, how we believe the, you know, things are. And um, we probably would stop having wars, so the problem of veterans um, wouldn't be had anymore. But it's just for right now, it's important that we understand why, why the uh, mistreatment of veterans occur. Uh, and the, the answer is not... Uh, to make them feel better so that more people go to war so they don't worry that when they come back it's going to be a disaster. <coughs> um, the answer is to understand that um, it's our fault, it's, it's our flaw to not see that we are in unwittingly rejecting them for a good reason. I don't know if that makes any sense, but once we understand that we don't, ex we, we shun our veterans because the species doesn't want to kill itself, we're more able to forgive our shunning and mistreatment of them. And then all of a sudden we feel like we can face it and we'll treat them better and we'll make sure and we'll see the actual sacrifice that they made. We forced them to go do something that nobody wants to do um, in reality, deep inside. And so we would be more able to do right and for a better thought out reason. It, we would There would be more honor, more dignity towards them because we were wrong too. We wronged them in sending them to war. It's a different way of looking at it. But at least we won't be in denial and we won't shun them and we won't look, look the other way. 
we will do right by them in a different way, not in a glorifying of war way, but in a way that understands what we have done to them and at least we'll be able to face it instead of being in denial about it and looking the other way.